Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Today on Sue's Healthy Minutes, we are talking chocolate. Now, Brad and I don't really play along with the highly commercialized celebrations, but I will say that seeing all the chocolate displays in stores right now inspired this week's podcast, All About Chocolate. We will look first at where chocolate comes from, how it is made, and then some fun facts and trivia and how it came to be associated with Valentine's Day. And of course, we'll look at some nutritional benefits as well. Real chocolate is a paste made from seeds of the Theobroma cacao tree, which literally means foods of the gods. Theo means God and broma means food. Cacao trees grow from 20 to 40 feet tall and usually take about five years to reach maturity to start producing seed pods. The lifespan of a cacao tree is only about 25 years. Once the tree reaches maturity, it will produce clusters of thousands of tiny white star-shaped flowers. Each tree has three types of flowers, but fertilization to produce the seed pods occurs only in two of these types. The base of these tiny flowers has a microscopic nectar secreting gland. The small shape and size of the flower makes it difficult for just any insect to pollinate. The cacao tree, therefore, depends on a species of minute pinhead sized insects known as midges to pollinate and complete this critical fertilization process. These tiny midges feeding on the cacao nectar pick up the sticky pollen on minute hairs on their backs and transfer it from flower to flower. These chocolate midges are most active at dusk and dawn which coincides exactly with the rhythm of the flowers that begin to unfurl in the late afternoon and are completely open by dawn. Cacao trees can bloom all year, but the midges are seasonally abundant. Fertilization success varies because the flowers are receptive to pollinators for only one or two days. Despite year-round blooming and the midges carrying pollen from one flower to another, fertilization occurs in only 10 to 20 percent of the flowers. Hundreds of fertilized flowers on each tree grow into tiny pods, but within weeks, a natural process causes most pods to die back, allowing the tree to direct its energy into producing only 20 to 40 healthy pods containing 30 to 60 seeds or beans in each pod. Approximately 400 beans yield one pound of finished chocolate. So one cacao tree produces only about nine pounds of chocolate per year. I call this divine design for sure. And the next time I enjoy a chocolate treat, I am for sure going to be most grateful. The surviving golden red to purple pods will turn brown at maturity, at which time they are picked, they're split open, and the beans removed. The beans then undergo a fermentation process to reduce their bitterness and improve the aroma and flavor. The beans are then dried, roasted, and cracked open to obtain the center cacao kernel called the cacao nib. Once extracted, 
The nibs are then ground to form an intensely flavored brown paste called chocolate liqueur or pure chocolate or cacao. The cocoa solids and fat from the bean, known as cocoa butter, are extracted from the cacao combined with sugar and oftentimes dry milk solids, lecithin, and vanilla to make various types of chocolate treats. The greater the cacao content in proportion to sugar, the more pronounced the flavor. Now let's look at a little chocolate terminology. Unsweetened chocolate, of course, is pure chocolate containing about 50% cocoa butter. And of course, as the name implies, no added sugar. The depth of flavor is usually the best in unsweetened chocolate. Semi-sweet or bitter chocolate are both considered dark chocolates, and they can usually be used interchangeably in a recipe. Semi-sweet contains about 60% cacao and a higher sugar content than the bittersweet chocolate. Semi-sweet has a smooth, dark chocolate flavor and is perfect for most dessert use. Bittersweet chocolate can have as much as 85% cacao, which lends a more intense chocolate flavor than semi-sweet chocolate. Milk chocolate, which is often our favorite indulgent treat, usually contains 35 to 45% cacao, except many milk chocolate candies may contain as little as 11% cacao. The addition of milk to the cacao gives milk chocolate its creamy, almost caramel flavor, but definitely comes with some compromise of any nutritional value. And white chocolate isn't chocolate at all. It contains no cacao or even cocoa solids. It is called white chocolate because it does contain cocoa butter. The addition of milk solids and sugar, again, may make white chocolate a delicious tasting treat, but again, comes with a compromise of nutritional value. Cocoa powder, also known as baker's cocoa, is made by pressing out the cocoa butter contained in the chocolate liqueur. The remaining cocoa solids are called natural cocoa powder, which is acidic and has a deep, bitter chocolate flavor. This is typically sold as unsweetened cocoa powder and is the one most familiar to consumers. Dutch processed cocoa powder undergoes a special alkalizing process done to cocoa powder to neutralize the acidity, resulting in a little more delicate and smooth chocolate flavor and a deep color. In baking, it is possible to substitute Dutch processed cocoa powder for baker's cocoa in a recipe, but not the other way around. If a recipe specifically calls for Dutch processed, then that is what should be used. Another important point to ponder when baking with cocoa powder is one most of us home bakers may have never even considered, and that is the fat content of the cocoa powder. The FDA requires that cocoa powder contain at least 10% cocoa butter. Due to the high cost of cocoa butter, though, most grocery store brands comply with just that amount and no more. Well, why does this matter? The fat content in your cocoa powder can make a real difference in the moistness of your brownie, your cake, or your cookie. Simply put, the less fat in the cocoa powder results in a powder with more starch. Since starch is very absorbent, it will tend to soak up the moisture in your batter or your dough. And this can lead to dry cakes, cakey brownies, and crumbly cookies. We all probably know that fat contributes to a softer texture baked good while adding richness and flavor. So going beyond the norm and looking for and choosing a cocoa powder for baking with a higher fat content can make a huge difference in both the flavor and the texture of our chocolate baked good. The ideal number to look for is about 20 to 22 percent fat. This may be determined by looking at the fat content per serving. A high-fat cocoa powder will list one gram or more of fat per one tablespoon serving, compared to only a half a gram or 0.5 grams per serving in traditional baker's cocoa powder. 
So now that we have covered our baking options, you may be thinking, so what is the actual difference in cacao or raw chocolate versus cocoa? Raw chocolate or cacao simply means that the product was made from fermented and dried but unroasted cacao beans, making them less processed and healthier. Raw cacao beans are full of antioxidants and are a rich source of minerals such as iron, copper, magnesium, zinc, and phosphorus. The potential health benefits of chocolate are attributed to the abundance of these nutrients found in raw cacao. Choosing the right cacao product to use will greatly depend on how you want to use it. While raw cacao powder may be superior in taste and nutritional value, it does cost more, and some of the antioxidants and other nutrients will be destroyed by heat if you bake with it. So, Unsweetened cocoa powder, though less nutritious than raw cacao powder, will still be the most practical choice for baking. Save the better quality and highly nutritious raw cacao powder for smoothies and other raw and less heated options. Most of us think of eating a chocolate treat as a guilty pleasure, which should be avoided. Chocolate's reputation as a junk food comes from the high calorie and sugar content in the commercially processed delicacies called candy. The refining process combined with the various unhealthy ingredients, mainly sugar, added to the candy make chocolate a less than desirable indulgence for sure. But real raw chocolate or cacao has many nutrients that can actually promote health good health, and that's good news. So let's take a moment to look specifically at a few of these valuable nutrients found in raw cacao. Cacao actually has more antioxidants known as flavonoids than many other foods tested, including blueberries, red wine, and black and green teas. This particular group of flavonoids found in raw cacao and other foods have been shown to improve vascular health, reduce blood clot formation, improve circulation, and helps dilate blood vessels. Cacao has also been shown to improve mood by increasing the levels of neurotransmitters in our brain, such as serotonin and endorphins, our feel-good hormones. Raw chocolate also contains a natural substance known as phenylethylamine that is reputed to stimulate the same feeling in the body as falling in love. Perhaps that's where its association with Valentine's Day comes from. Now, most of us know that minerals are essential for good health. Well, raw cacao can actually be a great source for many of these minerals, including magnesium, sulfur, calcium, iron, zinc, and copper. Most seeds are a rich source of magnesium, including grains and beans, but also raw chocolate or cacao. Magnesium has been shown to help maintain the proper levels of other minerals and to help balance brain chemistry. It helps to regulate heartbeat and blood pressure and, of course, is critical in helping to build strong bones. Studies show that most Americans are deficient in magnesium. Magnesium partners with calcium in our body's muscles contract relax mechanism. During a woman's normal monthly cycle, our calcium magnesium balance is often depleted, causing cramping, which may help explain our craving chocolate during this time. What we really may be needing is more magnesium, which chocolate, real chocolate, has an abundant supply. Cramping can often be greatly reduced by a calcium magnesium supplement and, of course, some good raw cacao. Sulfur is also a mineral found in raw chocolate, and sulfur is considered to be the beauty mineral. It's important for building strong hair and nails and beautiful skin. Sulfur helps to detoxify the liver 
and supports healthy pancreas function and good fat metabolism. The fats found in cocoa butter are considered healthy fats, such as oleic acid also found in olive oil. And there are actually substances found in raw cacao that are known to help reduce appetite. Chocolate contains a very minimal amount of caffeine, but does contain a phytochemical known as theobromine. It has a similar effect on the body than caffeine, but it's about 10 times weaker and it does not affect the central nervous system. Theobromine has stimulant yet relaxing properties and can actually lower blood pressure due to its diuretic and blood vessel dilating properties. It can also relax bronchial muscles in the lungs and can help persistent coughs. Theobromine content is higher in dark chocolate, and it's what gives dark chocolate its bitter, richer taste. While theobromine can be beneficial to humans, it can be highly toxic for some domestic animals such as dogs and horses. There are many confirmed health benefits of chocolate. But before you run out and buy a case of your favorite chocolate bar, please remember that just like our bread, it must be real and as close to its natural state as possible. Our raw cacao powder that we sell at Breadbeckers is great. Added to smoothies. You might remember my super energy shake episode number 69 of Sue's Healthy Minutes combining raw cacao with raw maca for a super energy boost for sure. Raw cacao is also great in my recipe of prebiotic cacao oatmeal bowls, a delicious overnight oatmeal treat combining the goodness of chocolate with the unique fiber of oats. This treat can be served for a high fiber breakfast or even as a dessert topped with fresh seasonal berries makes it even more special. We will put links to these recipes in my podcast description for today. And why not make a comforting cup of hot chocolate sweetened with raw honey and a pinch of cayenne pepper? Be sure to whisk in your raw cacao just before serving to maintain all its nutritional value. We sell both fermented or unfermented cacao powder at Breadbeckers as well as the raw cacao nibs. The fermented cacao will have a milder flavor than the unfermented, but will be slightly lower in antioxidant value. But both are great raw cacao choices. The raw cacao nibs that we sell are unsweetened and are great to add a little crunch to a smoothie, but might not be a great substitute for chocolate chips in a recipe as they are completely unsweetened. Well, I hope you have enjoyed learning all about chocolate today, but now for a little trivia. It takes 20 to 25 pods to get just two pounds of chocolate. The Aztec emperor Montezuma drank 50 golden goblets of hot chocolate every day. It was thick, dyed red, and flavored with chili peppers. Hawaii is the only U.S. state that grows cacao trees to produce chocolate. And the German chocolate cake was not created in Germany. In 1852, a man by the name of Sam German developed a sweet baking bar for the Baker's Chocolate Company. The product was named for him. And here's one for you. Chocolate syrup was used for blood in the famous 45-second shower scene in the Alfred Hitchcock's movie Psycho, which actually took seven days to shoot. The melting point of chocolate is just below body temperature, which is why it literally melts in your mouth. And in 1940, The Mars Company invented the M&Ms for the soldiers of World War II so they could enjoy a chocolate treat that would melt in their mouth and not in their hands. The connection between chocolate and love dates all the way back to the Mayans who first started brewing cacao beans and eventually came to be used in their marriage ceremonies. 
but it wasn't until 1861 when an inspired candy maker by the name of Richard Cadbury came up with a brilliant Valentine's Day marketing strategy of packaging his candies in heart-shaped boxes decorated with rosebuds and cupids, both popular symbols of love and romance. Thus, a new Valentine's Day tradition was born. Now, while you may want to avoid these sugar-filled delicacies found in these lovely heart-shaped boxes, studies do indicate that when men crave food, it is typically fat and salt. But when women crave a food, it is most often chocolate. So go enjoy some chocolatey goodness today. But remember, as always, make it real. And in this case, raw. Thank you for listening today. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.